we want to solve the trig equation for cosine four x equals two on the interval from zero to two pi, including zero and not including two pi. The first thing to recognize here is the interval here is for x, not our angle of four x. So if x is on the interval from zero to two pi, notice the angle four x would be on the interval from zero to eight pi, including zero and not including eight pi. Or if we want to use degrees, the interval from zero degrees to 1,440 degrees. For the next step, because we have a multiple angle, we will perform a substitution. And because we have a single multiple angle, we will not use the trig identities. We will let u equal the angle 4x. So notice if u is equal to 4x, this implies that x is equal to u divided by four, or if we want, x equals one-fourth times u. Forming the substitution, we have four cosine u equals two. And if u is equal to four x, notice how we'll have to solve this equation over the interval from zero to eight pi in order to find all of these solutions. For the next step, we solve the equation for cosine u by dividing both sides by four. Simplifying, we have cosine u equals two-fourths which is equal to one half. So now we need to find all the angles from zero to eight pi that have a cosine function value of one half. Having a cosine function value of one half should remind us of a 30, 60, 90 reference triangle where we label the short leg one, the hypotenuse two, and the longer leg square root three, where the small angle is three degrees or pi over six radians, and the other acute angle is 60 degrees which is equal to pi over three radians. Next on the coordinate plane, cosine theta is equal to x divided by r, and since x is positive in the first and fourth quadrants, we will now sketch a reference angle of 60 degrees in the first and fourth quadrants, and also sketch the reference triangle. Here's the reference angle of 60 degrees in the first quadrant. Here's the reference triangle. where this angle here is 60 degrees. If we want pi over three or one third pi radians. And now let's sketch the reference angle of 60 degrees in the fourth quadrant, which is here. And here's the reference triangle. So in standard position, this angle is 300 degrees, or if we want, five-thirds pi radians. But again, we're looking for all the angles that have a cosine function value of one-half from zero to eight pi. So we will let u equal one-third pi radians plus multiples of two pi, which will give us coterminal angles to one-third pi radians. So we'll say plus two pi times k, where k is some integer. This would be all the angles that are coterminal to one-third pi radians. And we can also have u equals five-thirds pi radians plus two pi k. Let's go ahead and list all the angles u that have a cosine function value of one-half from zero to eight pi. We would have u equals one-third pi as well as one-third pi plus two pi, one-third pi plus four pi, and finally one-third pi plus six pi. The next angle would be one-third pi plus a pi, which would be greater than eight pi. And then starting at five-thirds pi radians, we have u equals five-thirds pi, then five-thirds pi plus two pi, five-thirds pi plus four pi, and five-thirds pi plus six pi. The next angle would be more than eight pi radians. And now let's go and determine these sums, where two pi, or two pi over one, is equal to six-thirds pi. So we're really adding multiples of six-thirds pi to find the coterminal angles. So here we have u equals one-third pi, 
and then 1 3rd pi plus 6 thirds pi is 7 thirds pi. And then 1 3rd pi plus 4 pi is the same as 7 thirds pi plus 6 thirds pi, which is 13 thirds pi. And then finally, 1 3rd pi plus 6 pi is equal to 13 thirds pi plus 6 thirds pi, which is 19 thirds pi. And now we'll do the same starting at 5 thirds pi, where we have u equals 5 thirds pi, and then 5 thirds pi plus 6 thirds pi is 11 thirds pi. And then 5 thirds pi plus 4 pi is 11 thirds pi plus 6 thirds pi, which is 17 thirds pi. And then the last angle is 17 thirds pi plus 6 thirds pi, which is 23 thirds pi. Now we're not quite done yet. These are the eight solutions in terms of u, but remember we're trying to solve the equation for x, not u. And remember, x is equal to one-fourth times u. So if x is equal to one-fourth times u, to solve the equation for x over the interval from zero to two pi, we need to take each of these eight angles and multiply by one-fourth. So our final solutions are x equals one-fourth times one-third pi is one-twelfth pi. One-fourth times seven-thirds pi is seven-twelfths pi. One-fourth times thirteen-thirds pi is thirteen-twelfths pi. And then we have one-fourth times nineteen-thirds pi, which is nineteen-twelfths pi. And now we multiply each of these four angles by one-fourth. We also have x equals one-fourth times five-thirds pi, which is five-twelfths pi. One-fourth times eleven-thirds pi, which is eleven-twelfths pi. One-fourth times seventeen-thirds pi is seventeen-twelfths pi. And finally, one-fourth times twenty-three-thirds pi is twenty-three-twelfths pi. Notice all these angles are on the interval from zero to two pi. The given equation has eight solutions in terms of x. And before we go, let's verify this graphically. In blue, we have the graph of y equals four cosine four x. In red, we have the graph of y equals two. And notice how over the interval from zero to two pi, we do have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight points of intersection, which does verify we have eight solutions to the given equation over the given interval. I hope you found this helpful.